Hello and welcome to the Town of Litchfield Recreation Commission meeting. Tonight is Tuesday, November 21st, 2022. We are meeting live in the Town Hall Conference Room. The time now is 7.04 p.m. I'll start off with a uh, call to order and a roll call. Uh, my name is Steve Gannon. I am the chair. Mr. Mr. Andy Ruggles, uh, vice chair. Present. Secretary Judy Brennan. Here. We have our alternate, Jeff Town. Present. Member Chris Burns. Present. Member Peter Ames. Present. And a selectman rep, Mr. Steve Weber. Present. Um, before we get going, we're going to take a moment. Um, Peter, would you like to lead us in a moment of silence for Mr. Kurt Schaefer? Yes, if I could just make a couple comments first. As many folks know, uh, the community lost uh, Kurt Schaefer a uh, weekend before last. Uh, Kurt served in this community in a number of capacities, including serving on the select board, and it was the designate to uh, this body. Um, Kurt served uh, for a number of years here with the Rec Commission. Um, a you know, number of things I want to recall from him. First of all, uh, he was a pleasure to work with, always good with a joke, very caring for the community, but also a worker bee. He got things done in the community, most notably um, for the Litchfield Baseball Association, so where he put in enormous um, sweat, time, and effort, um, which is really paid in a legacy of that program here in town. Um, Kurt will be missed, uh, but he did create a lasting peace in this town. So just wanted to acknowledge the contributions he made to this body, to our town at large, and to recognize that um, his family and friends are all in our thoughts uh, during this time. I would ask for a moment of reflection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, Kurt will definitely be missed. Um, so tonight we have a review and acceptance of previous meeting minutes. We have two to review. First one was 1025-2022. That evening we had a full board. That was the evening we discussed the field maintenance contracts. Um, we tabled it at the last meeting. Has everyone had a chance to review? I couldn't find it. I don't know why. I tried looking in a couple spots. I have the November 8th, so, but I can just abstain. Okay. Um, any comments, modifications, changes? I'll make a motion to accept those minutes. Thank I'll you. second. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Abstained. Motion carries <clears throat> 601. Uh, second one was for November 8th, 2022. Um, we had a full board that evening. At Mr. Weber was um, absent working the town polls. Um, has everyone had a chance to review those meeting minutes? Are there any changes, edits, modifications? I'll make a motion to accept those minutes. I'll second. Thank you, Judy. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Aye. Six zero one. Thank you. Moving on. Public input. Litchfield Pickleball Association. If you guys would like to come join us at the table, come sit at the hot seat. <clears throat> and if you start off stating your name, your address, um, we know you're here for the Pickleball Association, and you have some upcoming changes you want to discuss. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Ron Oblinas. I live here in, in Litchfield, uh, down by Wilson's Farm. Uh, and I'm Cheryl Lang. I live on Mason Drive, 17. Yeah, and uh, so uh, there's a new board for the Litchfield Pickleball Association uh, that's formed. Uh, we'll formally uh, transition or become officially uh, in place on January 1st. Uh, I will be the incoming president. Uh, there's five of us, uh, and I'm going to defer giving you all the names. I can get, get them to you if you'd like. Yep, that would be great. Yeah, sure. And I think we've got an enthusiastic uh, group. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, playing to date there and a lot of interest. Uh, one of the things that we look forward to is uh, encouraging the use within the town. Um, and we appreciate uh, the opportunity to use uh, the hours there. Uh, there's a range from beginners to you know people that are, we'll call it advanced or, or very competitive. And 
we really have seen, uh, I've seen anyway, just watching the sign-ups in the last couple of weeks, that uh, we use what's called sign-up genius. So that uh, uh, you sign up for a particular group, and that way you're assured to, to play, but uh, that way you don't get a whole bunch of people coming uh, at, at a given time slot. So it's nice and balances it out. But that's been uh, filling up quite uh, steadily, uh, and so that's a, that's a great uh, opportunity. Uh, with the board, uh, when we're going to meet again uh, first of December, one of the things we'll be putting together is a survey uh, just to try to get a better handle on the, the types of people who are there, uh, the ranges of level and play. Um, if you haven't played pickleball, it's a very easy sport to pick up. It's one of the, you know, the, the positive things about it. Uh, so uh, people that uh, may not be active in other sports can actually have a fun game fairly easy and fairly quickly. Uh, what's interesting is pickleball is actually, uh, uh, I think you've talked about it, that the selectmen's meeting really become quite a sport on its own. There's a lot of celebrities playing. There's, you know, a, a, a growing professional side to it, uh, and it's fun to watch on TV. So there's a big range. And it really is uh, something unlike even a tennis game or some of the others. Uh, it It's fairly easy to get in and enjoy fairly quickly. So one of the things we're working on is, is trying to understand how, where our players fall as far as their skill levels and how competitive they want to be. And then we're, we're looking to try to tailor the, the schedule to match that as best we can and encourage uh, uh, more use uh, during the day. So anyway, so there's a 30 cent. Do you, can I ask a question? Do you think you have anyone in the Pickleball Association who would be maybe willing to give lessons if there was? I we suspect do. we're going to have, we, we do. We have questions several. about that yeah. from, there are several. from the town. Yeah, Pete. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Can I say from here, do I? Whatever you're comfortable with. Um, Pete, I'm right. resident of Litchfield, past LPA president. Um, I can teach. John Cross teaches. A lot of the folks that have been playing for a while will teach okay. in a heartbeat. That's one thing they asked about. So we always encourage folks to make, pay back the game. So if someone comes in new, they're going to take the time to show them how to play the game. Okay. It's, so to yeah. your point of the instruction, yes. Yeah, there, there may be like a group of people say, hey, we want to get yeah, some instruction. Been interest. Can yeah. we? we Absolutely, yeah. He's, down, he's, he's certified. Okay. So we have probably three or four folks that are certified. There are some outside resources we can bring in as well if we get big groups that are certified level one, level two instructors. Um, so that's available, and that's definitely an approach that okay. can be done. Okay. And then how would they go about getting in touch with you? So those are the two questions we've received a lot lately is, how do I get in touch with playing pickleball? How do I do it? And I never did it. Who's going to teach me? Um, well, a couple, a couple of things. I, I, I'll give you my phone number, and, um, and we got some other people here. They're... Uh, let me just back up here. The, the one thing, the way it's set up right now is uh, uh, to play, you need to join the uh, LPA. And uh, part of that is uh, making sure they, they sign the insurance waiver. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think that was a stipulation within the town. So that's one thing we uh, make sure everybody uh, does that. Uh, we try to be very uh, judicious in, in that aspect of it. Uh, and the sign up is through a thing called Sign Up Genius, and it's an online app. So, uh, one of the things is for a member, they can come in with a, uh, a guest, somebody new can come in with a member. And that's how they, we get them in, we get their application, and uh, then get to play. Uh, so, what, what I envision is setting them actually some times for just new people you know, a slot for beginners, if you will, or some training side. Uh, I'm speaking ahead because we no, haven't actually perfect, yeah. discussed there's, it, but I can't imagine. There's a time slot they've given up for a couple of days a week. It's on, uh, it's like yeah. 30 to 4. Skills and drills. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. And that yeah. Whole, when that was set up, that's specifically for to bring people in to teach, to instruct. Generally, yeah. it's been used for games, but with the two courts, you can definitely set that up. Yeah, and I think, I think you know, as Peter talks about, that some of the some of the designations are a little bit... Uh, um, unclear as to what they mean, you know, the groupings on Sign Up Genius. So I think it, you know, I'd like to see if we just say, you know, beginner's instruction, you know, it's going to be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a 
on Mondays or something or whatever, you know, convenient for the people who want to teach. Four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, maybe, yeah. yeah, four in the morning. So anyway, uh, one of the things we, again, without getting too far afield, uh, I think we're looking forward to trying to make more accommodations. It, it, it really does seem to be something uh, that's uh, going to be exciting. So, okay. So going forward, um, we talked briefly before the meeting. Um, you're going to work on your schedule. Yep. Um, work with us. We'll figure it out, and then when you get your schedule and we can fit it in, that's yep. something that we could definitely rely on to let people know how to, you know, when, how, and where to go when it's time. Yeah. And, and I think uh, even on. Uh, we can arrange how to set up numbers on your website too, mm -hmm. people, you know, so they can contact us uh, and uh, make it easier. I wouldn't say yeah, your I phone number now though, because it'll be on public television. Yeah, yeah. Unless you want it. A, All seven people uh, want it. Email you may have is incorrect because when I had first started emailing, it was it was going nowhere and then it was bouncing back and. Okay. okay. So we might the information we have on the website might be incorrect. Yeah, we need to update that. Yeah, and that's one of the first things. We're, you yeah. know, I've got somebody on the committee that's going to be looking at the website. It's very outdated. Um, I was embarrassed when I went and looked at it. Not so much, but it, it, you know what's happened over the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, it, yeah, and we're tra transitioning to the exactly. new Exactly. We, we, we went through the same thing, and you've yeah. got to revive things. You've got to reapproach things. Right. Yeah. It's, yep. yep. Yeah. And Perfect. with the outdoor courts that are proposed, um, it'll be nice to be able to continue the clinics and yeah. bring people in yeah. and start that. How about we um, we'll jump to that? We have that in old business, but if you want to cover that now, give a quick update on the pickleball courts, Chris and Judy. This is uh, Chris Burns. He's one of the members leading it up, as well as uh, Judy Brennan are the ones leading up the pickleball courts. I, I did see the presentation. I appreciate your efforts on that. Thank you. Several, yeah, several were here. But if you weren't here, the, the town approved uh, the use of impact fees to put in pickleball courts. So we will be moving forward with that and yeah. get our final sizing and know what we're working with. Do we want to discuss the, uh, the the options that we're looking at right now? Or do we want to wait? Go for it. Okay. For, if you, if you're um, comfortable with that. <clears throat> That would be great. Thank you. Oh, I think I have one. Well, I'll take another one. Okay. It's in here one somewhere. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Do you have one more? I do. Oh. If you don't, I have a copy from the presentation. We're good. Right. So, we're good. We started off uh, by, by looking at a couple sure. of different options uh, in, in court styles, court types. Um, we've got pricing on on either or on both options. Um, the first the first option, DG contracting, uh, is, is quoted us, and, and their quote is attached on the back side of this here. Um, six courts uh, with a size of 170 feet by 64 feet. Um, that's assuming the pad work and site work are by others, which which is already covered um, separately. Uh, it's a it's a pre-finished perforated tile um, with the in-ground removable posts and nets. Um, they did in, uh, they did include fencing. I, I'm sorry, I forgot to delete that fencing is not included in that that section there. Um, but they their 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 prices uh, for this full full install is $122,726. Um, that might come down a little bit because I know that their fencing that they've quoted us is a 10 foot tall divider, uh, not that four foot or three foot, whatever it was that we, that we had discussed with them. So that might come down a little bit and then depending on what happens, um, with some of the, the other, uh, surveying stuff that we're looking at. Right. And, um, um adjust that a little bit. And I was checking, I checked with Karen White. She's out of the office. She's going to let me know what. They paid okay. at the dump for fencing and who they used so okay. we can compare mm -hmm. yep. um, the footage and see where that comes out. Yep. Yeah, because we're, I mean, we're talking $40,000 for, for fencing. Fencing is a lot and the lead time is huge. Yeah, okay. Is what we ran into yeah. on the town side. Okay. Let's see how that comes out. Uh, this is a, this is a, I don't know if you look at that quote. It's a, um, they have a, I'm not sure exactly what the product is, but it's, 
it's labeled as a, a soft net, a black soft net, so that leads me to believe it's not a chain link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly what they're referring to, but and that's the perimeter and the divider fence. Um, the other option that we looked at was New England Sports Floors. Um, they they gave us an option for just painting over the pad, um, which is assumed to be mm -hmm. asphalt. Uh, and then they also have another uh, a tile solution uh, themselves, which is a different product from DG Contracting, but uh, very similar, I, I, I suppose. Um, so to paint uh, the court, install the nets and the poles, and provide the fencing on that, uh, it's almost $105,000. Um, they do need to get in ahead of time before the pad goes down to put the footings in for the posts. Oh, okay. Uh, so we need to coordinate that if we go that route. Um, and then their their perforated tile or, or, or structure that goes over the the, the pad would be uh, would be a lot more expensive, one hundred seventy five thousand dollars with the netting and fencing and everything else that we would need. So that's over the budget. But <clears throat> so. I'm open to some feedback. Um, I know we discussed this before, uh, really, the, the differences between the asphalt and the tile. And, and I mean, you guys are going to be the ones primarily using it. So <laughs> I'd like to get some input from you uh, to see what you uh, what your thoughts are on either option. And Yeah, the, the tile, uh, I've actually played on a surface of the tile. And it is, you know, it's a nylon, I guess, or a plastic type of uh, locked together. Mm -hmm component and it lays down on top of the base um, my reaction is is I would prefer an asphalt type of surface um, the tiles are good in some respects uh, they drain well so you know you can, if it rains you can probably play a little sooner maybe but the ball does seem to skid on them uh, on the one place I saw and I don't know if it, how professionally it was installed was over a tennis court but you could see where the tiles were moving up against the fence. Um, the other side is, I don't know, uh, and hopefully, Peter, if you've got any comments, please feel free, but I haven't seen any, uh, the majority of places I've seen are the asphalt-based, uh, or a uh, hard surface-based, I guess to put it that way, uh, court. And I think we would be somewhat very unique in fact, I, I can't think of any place else other than this. It was actually in a homeowners association uh, where I played on the surface. So I've never seen uh, the tiles used anywhere else. And I'm not. Wait, where was the homeowners? It was actually over in London Dairy here. In London Dairy. Did, you, did somebody mention Pelham to me? Pelham. No, it yeah, wasn't Pelham. Pelham, Pelham not... has some tiles, and they're removing the tiles from one of the courts because of the some of the. Okay, I did email them and didn't hear back asking what company they used and what they used yes. and okay. what their yeah. feedback was, but I haven't heard back. Okay. I put it out on Piccolo Forum, which is a national forum on Facebook, and I got a couple of responses back, and it was good service, just like they say here, it's good for the hips, legs, and so forth, but the play of the ball became somewhat not thrilling, and, and it's, so there's a trade-off, you know, if we're going to look for that, and then I had some other folks that I know that play all over the place, and they came back and said no. Um, that the use slowed down once people started playing on the surface. However, if you came up and said, this is where we're going for that, we would, I think we wouldn't turn the pickleball courts down. I just think it's in a growing phase of the actual surface that you need. If the pad isn't pristine, like, as Ron was saying, sometimes they'll, they'll start to curl. Now you're gonna ball, it's gonna bounce the straight. I think it looks good, it cleans good, the maintenance is low. So there's definitely a lot of value in going that route. Just not me. I'm just not 100% sure that I haven't got a lot of people come back and say that's the way to go. Yeah. DG Contracting does warranty it, right? 15 years. Yep, 15, um, 15 year warranty. I just want to. Um, I mean, that's another thing to think about, too. That's, that's an check with Pelham and see what. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my thought well with the tile sure over the I asphalt is, thing. I mean, we, we, we're here because we, we discussed repairing those tennis courts yeah. and the shape that those are in, and, you know, going with the asphalt over over a tile that you know in five or ten years we might kind of be in the same predicament as we are with the tennis courts well, I think I think part of the you know the the important thing is the base no matter what you put down so you know if if the base is put down and doesn't crack uh, or stays quite stable then either either surface is going to be somewhat okay. the same um, I've actually uh, there's a place we play in the summer 
uh, up in Maine uh, that they've used tennis courts and, and the players come in and you know they had cracks and they've sealed them and uh, the association essentially maintains it and stuff like that so um, I think the surface the base is really the important thing and if it's put in well it's going to do well for either surface my personal opinion if I had to choose would be the, the non tile and it's because it's it's more universal again if uh, you're ever you know I heard somebody mention uh, you know tournaments and stuff like that um, I haven't played anywhere where a tournament's been held on the thousand. I'm not trying to say, yeah, I, but you asked for an a, opinion. And, Absolutely. That's, yeah. Yeah, that, and that's why we if, I, if I had to choose, I would say uh, a hard surface. It, it, it plays more true. The ball bounces consistently better. The tiles I've seen, particularly when it gets a little damp, will skid. Or you know, essentially, they're not hitting a every time they're hitting a, a you know a, a solid surface a tile by its very nature has holes in it so the bounce is a little less than uh, true at least to my you know, when i played on it and so okay. if i had to choose that's that's the feedback i'm looking for okay before we make our decision yeah and, and are you considering revenue in the future for tournaments on these courts the six courts eventually I mean, I think it would be up to LPA if you wanted to host them. Right. Because well, I, I think we don't have the... My thing is, I mean, I think we do need to find some sort of revenue source from these courts so we can think about maintaining them mm -hmm. properly in the future. The mm -hmm. revenue stream would be generated probably best in the summer. And here's what they... Bear with me, sort of just for a minute. Yep. We went down the Cape and Dennis. We do it in, they do it in Harwich. We do it all these places. Dennis, for example, had 850 members sign up this summer. <laughs> wow. Average cost 40 bucks a piece. And what the summer got them was we started playing, and you're playing year round, but this membership got you from May through October for monitored play. So between the hours of 8 and 11 on the hot months, between the hours of 9 and 12 on the outside months, there was monitored play, and that's when people came and played the most. We'd have 65 to 100 people per day there playing, 14 mm -hmm. courts. The courts were still open after the hours, but that membership got you balls. The monitor play because you can balance it out the levels of plays one talked about either so it generated generated a revenue stream for the town in addition a percentage of clinic money went to the town so they took an old basketball court that was garbage put in 14 courts and to your point there's a revenue stream coming in yeah, right because that's that, mean you're going to get 800 people but there's some right. number that you could definitely do it with because i think that's some of the issue with the basketball courts is we there's no revenue to maintain them, so over time they crack. And if pickleball is heavily used, and we know every couple of years we have to reseal them or what have you this would to help maintain, that. right? Yeah, that's my only thought because yeah. I feel like we, you know, we have all these facilities. Like, look at the tennis courts that are all cracked, yep. and we don't have the money to. We don't to have fix funding them. to. So we we're we have money to build new ones, but not to fix the ones <laughs> yeah. that we actually have. Unfortunately, yeah, that's just, part of the impact fees is you can build new but not maintain. Yeah. Can't, so it's and you can't repair. Well, existing. I think you know one of the things you know um, I'm speaking of the board because quite truthfully, uh, my my learning of these are fairly recent. I'm excited uh, and I applaud you for the you know the moving forward. Uh, you know we and we will as a board uh, be happy to work with you and. Uh, you know, we'll, We'll certainly uh, be talking about that. Um, and, and as Peter said, I think it would be logical to uh, continue. So a lot of the places we play, there's a like a dollar fee or something like that, you know, pay for the balls and stuff like that. Um, if there's uh, sufficient interest uh, to, you know, continue, and we can work out how we link the, the winter and the summer groups together. And that's all something we can, we can work on, but... Uh, I think that's where the revenue stream comes. The other one that I mentioned that I'm familiar with in Brunswick, uh, they actually took over a homeowner's uh, condo, but they did all the work. They collected fees. They collected a created a nonprofit like the LPA is, so they could, you know, uh, take the money and and use it. And they did all the patching, uh, you know, and even the the members come out and uh, repainted the lines and all that goes with it. So I'm not offering I go out there and paint the lines. <laughs> but you'll collect the funds to get the lines but, painted. But yeah, yeah. But I think, uh, you know, that's one of the things that would make a lot of sense is to, you know, if you'd like us to work on ways to do that, I think we'd be happy to undertake that as a, 
as a going forward. Uh, for I forget one one thing I'd like to maybe just discuss is the size and the layout of the of the courts if we could at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, this pricing is based on on six courts and, and the size of the the pad that we've discussed is 170 by 64. Yeah. Uh, I know Judy has the um, had, had done some research on the size of the court plus the the overrun. The overrun on each side. Yeah. Um, which I think was what. In, to, in the back. 12, so 12 to 15 feet somewhere we on. were looking at um, 170 by 64. Um, so that would give you. Uh, on the ends 10 feet yeah on the outside and then depending on if we can go 180 feet then we wanted to get the pad 180 feet would give us a little bit better spacing yeah in between so the 20 it's yeah. 22 by uh 44 20 by 44 and then uh the 10 feet in between yeah um the uh like from behind the baseline, yeah, the baseline. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah baseline to the yeah, yeah. And then um, looking at probably about six feet overrun between, but uh, we had talked about if we can go 180, go a little bigger on the pad yeah. and have more space, we would do that. And if we, if we were feeling it was not enough space in between, we could come back to five quarts. Yeah. And I think that's discussions we'd have with you once the surveying is done and we know all of that for sure. Uh, the one thing I would add to the consideration is, is usually what happens you get a lot of people playing, and the courts when the courts get filled, then there's people waiting and getting in line. So you kind of need an additional accommodation of you know, where do people queue up to wait? Staging area. <laughs> yeah, uh, particularly if you know I'm you know you brought up at the, the selectman meeting you know like a, a tournament so. But even even in normal play, yeah. one of the things that uh, we might uh, I'd offer is is making the width even on another ten feet if we could if that could be accommodated. And the reason being is I would envision that say this is the layout here. Um, we'd have the courts this way, and then a four foot fence along one edge of it, and then then. The full perimeter would be the 10 foot. The reason an extra 10 feet would be is that would allow people to walk behind the courts and stage behind the courts and stand and watch. And I think that's important, uh, you know, because, okay, a court opens up here, you want to walk behind without going onto the courts. Uh, and that's very, you know, that, the way we play it, it gets really disruptive. Okay, we've got to wait for people to get in behind you and all that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, so something like, Something like that would be helpful. So if you can picture what I was talking so about. Thinking more, um, we did 10 feet on each and the recommendation was less than that, but we intentionally added the 10 feet and then. Um, I'm being greedy. The 10 on either side would be great. And then if we could have, you know, like another 10. Or on one side. On one, uh, on, on one side, yes. So we did an extra 10 on both sides at the ends. Oh no no I'm I'm talking Here. this way the length the length yep this yeah. way so you're you're thinking 74? 74 yes 74 74 okay. 76 would be nice because that would give us okay. 12 12 is 76. would be a a nice because I mean people like to you know uh, bring the chairs or we could actually set up some benches along you know for people to sit so, so. Uh, and. And that'll help play quicker and yeah, plays quicker through. and and but more importantly is it it allows people to you come off. There's a system usually putting paddles up or something to get ready, get you in line for the next one. Uh, also, um, you know if you want to watch a group, you know is you can stand behind. Some some people just like to come and watch, and uh, we've done that at times. So that would actually make it okay. quite a bit more functional. And then once we they're lined up. We had six feet between, but then we had 10 on the ends, thinking there could be a couple benches there, too, at the ends with more space. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. What would you like to see the overrun be? Um, or what do you... On the yeah. ends? On the two ends? The two ends. Oh, I think... It made sense to make them big, make more space, but, like, in between them. Peter, what, what did you do down in uh, the Cape? What's the distance between the courts? 
six huh? feet is what we had. Do you do if you have a tennis court, which is a 60 by 120, I think you have five and a half feet between the, the courts. Yeah, but here we're kind of building new. It's recommended five, but we, I think I've six. played and yeah. five can be a little bit tight. It be so tight. We put in for six in between. I think. Uh, and then 10 at each at end, so there could be a little more space at the end. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to be greedy again. <laughs> one thing that would be helpful is, is the way this is laid out is it's long. So one of the things that also gets disruptive is where the balls go while you're playing. Yep. So uh, on a lot of the courts, there is, again, the short fences placed between the courts. Or, 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 or every hoping. two courts. So we, we do have that included in the pricing yeah. right now. Oh, okay. Um, the, think, yes. the dividing fences in between yeah. each court. Okay, so the fences become a constriction. So the distance between the courts. So you'd have three feet between three the feet, fence yeah. and the court yeah. on yeah. both sides. That's actually fairly tight. That's tight. Yeah. Okay. So um, I played at a place in Thornton where they had the dividing fences, but they didn't go all the way. Mm -hmm. They were maybe from the kitchen on each side. It, to, it was in there maybe a little bit more, but it didn't go you talking all the, the way across. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've, the, I've looked kitchen. at a bunch of different ones and what their layouts are and then mm -hmm. found ones that I like. And, but the majority around here are on tennis courts. So yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so the reason we went that long way is because it mirrors the tennis courts and you have that parking Yep. And no, um, we would location. widen the parking area along with it. So yeah. if yeah. it sits parallel with it. Does it make sense to add more space between between the courts? And is it yes. as a trade off, is it necessary to pave that extra ten or twelve feet um, where people are gonna be waiting and not it, playing? If you got ten feet you know, outside the, the court, do you need there. another 10 feet? Does that last 10 feet? Well, the, the reason I would say yes, the, the, yes, because what are you gonna, What would the surface be otherwise? Yeah, crushed gravel or yeah, something. Yeah. Kicked on the yeah. court, weeds are going to come through. It's more to maintain. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, yeah, I agree. That, yeah. So, I, so ideally, you'd do that, but if you, if you have to make trade-offs. Yeah, that's yeah I, I don't know what I'm... I'm I, I don't know what your arrangement for the pad is, so and, I, and that's why I, I'm offering suggestions if there's limitations. Well, that depends on the survey. Yes. Yeah. Right? Well, no, I think no, this is a conversation we can have after the surveying is done and we okay. know exactly what we have to work with. Right. Yeah. And um, maybe it doesn't even have to be a full meeting. We can just have a couple reps and kind of lay it out. Yeah, and I'd, be, I'd be happy to, you course. know, if there's some follow-up, um, I, I would be happy to come and sit down and look at, you know, some layouts and talk yeah. it through. So rather than discuss it tonight, just there's a thought is the court and then if we can accommodate that, uh, we'll call it the runner area or, or the area behind, that would be, I think, make the, the facility far better. I think you just need to look at how many gates you're going to have. If you're going to have one in the center of the long way, that's probably not going to work because then you come in crossing courts. So yeah. Yeah, two, we've talked about multiple area. entrances, yeah, so you're that, not that's yeah. crossing yeah. courts. And also yeah. for safety things, you can get in and out quicker. Yeah, so we put a couple in the big gate, maybe on, you know, on the thirds, and then we'd have, you know, smaller entries into the courts through the, you know, we'll call it the small back fence or the half fence. But we can, I'd be happy to sit down with you. Yeah, once we know exactly what that, the surveyor says and what the pad can be, then we can really work on the yeah, sizing. So moving forward, and we've got to get the surveyor in, et cetera. Um, the gentleman who's offered to put the courts in is very accommodating and what he's told us is you tell me what you want i'll get it done oh. so if we go and say this is what we're looking at as long as it's not okay. unreasonable uh -huh. i think we'll be okay okay um, he said he'll do the site work he'll do the tree work he'll put the pad in and we pay for the fencing and etc <laughs> i'll applaud that, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very generous extremely generous I'll, yes i can imagine um and then like i said we got the approval from uh, the board of selectmen to use the impact fees so that's that'll pay for the <clears throat> fencing etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah. we're going to move forward aggressively as and as fast as possible okay so you said judy and chris would be are leading it up so they'll be the ones that you'll talk with and work out the details as we move forward once we get you know we get into the next step okay and we welcome the collaboration thank yes. you and i appreciate yep. the opportunity yeah. you know thank you for all your work
like I said, I we live in a town here. We've been here th 30 years, and I have to. I'm embarrassed that I didn't know about it until a couple weeks ago. But <laughs> it, it, it crept up. It crept up quick. Yes. It did. Yeah. I yes. did. So let us know what you need us need us to do. And yeah, we'll be. I'll continue to be in touch with you, and once we know what um, we can put down for a pad and the sizing, then it'll be a good time to talk about. Yep. what we want for spacing and okay and terrific how it'll work out anything else for us uh, no nope. thank you for okay. coming in appreciate Thanks. it if you could like I said once you get the board going and you figure out times and dates if you could send it to us so we could put it on the calendar so we know when you're in there in the morning when you want to be in there in the afternoon and then um we'll put up oh, the calendar thanks. so everybody else okay. can thank you work around that okay. what's the latest in the afternoon we can um, use the facility Monday through Friday so typically on the weekends I mean on the weekdays um, after school is when the sports start so I think it's what baseball gets in there not baseball basketball basketball is in there basketball at five in there. at five yeah okay. so it's possible that we could schedule up till five or let's say 430 430 give them yeah a little time for you to clean out and get people in so I would yep. say at least a half hour um, so yeah, four thirty ish. Okay. I don't know what time they usually get there. Probably right at five, right? I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. What's your request for five? Yeah, uh, four thirty. Four thirty? No, but th what's basketball's request? Five five p.m. Yeah, it's like five to nine oh, thirty or something. Or is it five thirty to nine? Five to nine, and then every third Wednesday, uh, scouts are in there at five thirty. So five to nine, Monday through Friday, is basketball. So you can. Uh, for well, one other thought, while well, I have to think of it, is the stands in the building now? They don't. They haven't been on. It might actually help with the heating. The ones up top. Yeah, yeah. they don't work. They don't right work. Now. Oh, they don't work. The motors are burnt out, from what I understand. Oh. Yeah. It's the you place know, is falling apart. I, don't know. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving forward. We have no one else for public input except for Chris's daughter, and she never says anything to us. <laughs> Come on, Mackie. Give us some input. Right, so move forward, <laughs> facility and field requests. We have two. One is um, Litchfield Presbyterian Church. Uh, Sean Haley would like to have a cornhole tournament for the fundraising for a food pantry in Angel Tree. He's looking to use Talent Hall Sunday, 1218, from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., uh, we're still pending a certificate of insurance, and right now softball's in there till two. Okay. Um, they originally had requested Saturday, one to seven or two to seven. They wanted to change it to Sunday, and then because it's a one-day certificate of insurance. Um, I think it's required because of the activity no Plus what I'm saying is like they don't want to get insurance they didn't want to get the COA for one day and then have us say no you can't have it on that oh, day I gotcha, I so gotcha. that's so, why right. if we say you could Pending have it at that COI. right yeah um they'll get the COI for that date gotcha gotcha okay um, and they know they have to follow all the guidelines with uh police and alcohol yeah. and so they have also done sean's done this they've done it multiple before. years yeah. yeah they just couldn't make the meeting tonight yep yeah, that's fine so um so the only thing would be softballs in there at two till two would you we probably them? can accommodate it based off of our schedule being in flux right now due to other sports we're not sure when the home games are yet or anything so okay <clears throat> we probably can accommodate that day all right, so. Um, so we could um, do it pending the COI, approved pending COI, and then I'll let yep, you know when, yep. when they do get that in. But I can see the point for a one day COI yeah, not I wanting agree. to have Are to do it then change it. they actually insurance or just getting this, or is it just a COI from it, for an existing policy? I don't know what they have through the church and what their church, their okay. certificate covers. So, but they would have yeah. to have something with alcohol on it anyway. Oh, yeah, that's right, two million dollars. Yeah. Right. That probably so, cost yeah. extra. Yeah. Um, in years past, wasn't it six oh three that ran this? It was. I thought it was six oh three. It was six oh three that did it. This is the first time I think the church is doing um, it. They said they did it before, but it, was, it probably was before COVID. It was six oh three. It was six oh three. It was six oh three, definitely. Yeah. And this is six. Yeah, and they tied it in once to what? They're dogs or something? Wasn't it for pets? And another time they still did Christmas gifts. They it's been a bunch of different ones. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Christmas gifts. 
The, the and, second and one, right? Yeah. Pet food yeah. was another yeah. one. Yeah, it's the, their forms listed under Litchfield Presbyterian Church. Okay. And not six oh three, but. I think it was what Brian Fletcher. They used to be the one that would do it. Brian and Sean. They're Brian and Sean. Okay, yeah. So it's probably the same group, but. All right. Um, so I will make a motion to allow Sean Haley in the Litchfield Presbyterian Church to use Talent Hall on Sunday, twelve eighteen, from one to seven p.m. for a cornhole tournament, uh, pending the certificate of insurance for that day, plus. Um, ensuring that they have legal representation from the Litchfield Police Department. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify. Oh, actually, because of, uh, I should have done this earlier, because of uh, Mike's absence, you will be a, a full voting member tonight, Jeff. Sorry about that. Um, so all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstained. Motion carries seven zero zero. All right, I'll let them. I'll let them know. Uh, second one, uh, Lions Club. Tammy Hoffman, Hoffman came before us at the last meeting. Uh, they are looking to restart family movie nights at Talent Hall, seeking to use Talent Hall Sunday, one twenty nine, twenty twenty three, from two thirty to five thirty p.m. And you have received the certificate of insurance. Yep. They're going to be selling refreshments. I don't believe they're going to be doing any alcohol or anything else. Um, yeah, okay. Um, this is one of those falls into what we talked about two weeks ago about Lions Club being a Litchfield, well, the nonprofit. So they fall into the nonprofit. They are Litchfield based, so they, they do fall into our categories. All right, so I'll make a motion to approve uh, Lions Club via Tammy Hoffman to use Talent Hall Sunday, 129, 2023, 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. for a family movie night. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries 7-0-0. New business. Uh, we have one, the Spirit of Litchfield is seeking approval to purchase the big red mailbox that they've been using to collect letters from Santa. I believe the owner of the mailbox is moving away or whoever owns it, and they're going to purchase it for $40. Uh, town administrator um, wants us to have the, this in the meeting minutes with approval. Um, the funds will come from the Spirit of Litchfield's funds in the rec revolving account. So I'll make a motion to approve Spirit of Litchfield to use $40 from the rec revolving account to purchase the rig big red mailbox. A second. Uh, any discussion? Just a question. Do we normally need to approve expenditures from a project, like a program's own revolving fund expenses? No. This is new. So is, <clears throat> is there a particular reason why we need to approve this one for $40? I would well, I go with... A new town administrator new just town wanted administrator. to make sure everything is yeah. okay. set. Okay. Yeah, typically for something like this small, and especially for rec revolving and Spirit of Litchfield, they have the money in that account. Like baseball the revolving had to get approval back in the day. For how much? No. That was coming out of Jeff Lane for the no, even our revolving fund when we went. Uh, we had a revolving fund at one point for like the comedy show money. And yeah, stuff. but that was all tied back in the Jeff Lane. So when we did the comedy show, it was all the money from that went to the revolving fund. Got it. And we could pull from it, but we had to go and get, we had to go ask permission as baseball back in to rec. Can we pull from it? Right. So did you, so it was a, the general fund and not the Spirit of Litchfield, or did you have a Jeff Lane? We had a revolving fund. So Jeff Lane had impact fees, then it had a revolving fund that went okay. with it. And that was all the comedy shows and everything right. we did. All the money would go back into the town, but it would be earmarked for Jeff Lane in the revolving fund. Um, do you think you could speak with our new town administrator okay. to find out some guidelines? Uh, you know, I'd hate to have to spend meeting minutes talking about a forty-dollar mailbox. <laughs> I'll talk. <to> her. <laughs> find out her reason. I definitely it. appreciate what she's doing and looking out. You know, making sure that we're doing it. But just to get this moved forward, I just wanted to. Yeah. So. And and usually, what is it? It's under five hundred dollars. You can sign off normally. I, that's what I thought. That's what I thought yeah. too. Yeah. So. But I know that's from our budget, so I don't know if a revolving fund's different. 
But I'll ask the question. I'll let you know. Okay. Any other discussion? Nope. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 700. Zero, zero. Uh, next one. Old business. Uh, field maintenance contract extension. I st we still need to get the contract finalized and before the town admin and legal. Um, I sent a time frame around the contract extension. One thing that we talked about is we want to have the contract, at least the numbers, if we can get it signed before the October, the first October Board of Selectmen meeting. So I went and I backed it out. If we still want to have July with one meeting and August one meeting, we have to start the first August meeting. Um, I know Mike thought it was too early to get a true assessment of how the new vendor or the contractor is doing, and I, I agree with him, but it's unless we stop doing those one meeting in July I still and think August, we should have two meetings in July well, and August. Want to go back and, to and the, because what's the worst that could happen? You just say, all right, we have no agenda items no, tonight. Like, yep. Is everybody okay with not holding a meeting? Or, you know, I think that happened a couple times before. Yep. So I'd almost rather have the two scheduled. That way we have them. Yeah, you can look what's on the dock and say yay and nay to it. Yeah. And even if it's something simple as That way as we don't have, to have special meetings because then it's harder to get people coordinated. Whereas if it's a set scheduled date, yep. if you just either show up or not, depending on what we have. All right, so moving forward, we'll, get, we'll uh, schedule meetings for July and August. So then around this, what would that do to the time frame? Do you want to... It'd probably push it two weeks, right? So we'll say... At least two weeks. Probably the last meeting in July is as far as you probably could push it. Right. Because how long does they do they need to review and approve? What do we take when we send out the RFP? What is it? 15 days? 30 days? I don't remember what it is. I think it was like two weeks. It's 14 two, days. 14 I days? Yeah. It's two weeks to get a response. Yeah. It was two weeks, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. So I'll modify it to say the second meeting in July, we will have a uh, we will discuss the contract extension and we will do it in non-public so that we could go over everything and then yeah I'll, I'll go through the dates again and back it out so everybody can see it um, with the main intention of having a contract if we could have it signed before October um, the other items we have to do is the uh, verbiage around the first right of refusal, I think that would be fairly straightforward as long as we have the dates. Um, we have to get some write up, and this we'll talk with Ryan about directly. Do you think you can do that? Talk to Ryan about the um, the well, and then we'll work with um, legal to get that all finalized. Is that something you're comfortable He'd with? like to get it done as soon as possible. Yeah. 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 Call me tomorrow. All right. Um, yeah, see if you could write something up, and we'll work with legal. We'll plan is take his old contract that we had a couple of years ago. We'll put in the first right of refusal. We'll put in the dates around the right of refusal so he knows when we will approach him. Um, if get some verbiage about the well as part of the contract for the first year. Um, there's one thing I'm missing. Oh, there was. Um, I'm, I'd like to set something around a, a percentage. What I want to avoid is a contractor coming in and saying, I have first right of refusal and, and I'm jumping up 25%. If we put in a percentage that you cannot go above, we, he, they will know they have to come back and submit an RFP. So, when do, but when what do we benefit does that give us? I mean, yeah. I don't know. Even if we say 10%, right? And we look and say, you shouldn't go up more than two, and they go up 10. You go up 10. We Why still can you? say no, right? It's so it really still. doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah. It comes down to what, I guess, is the feel of us. What happened to material costs? Where's the cost of fuel? Where's the cost of labor at yeah, the present I mean, date? So I don't think a percentage helps us at all. Okay, so we'll it's just... Open-ended. Open-ended. Yeah. So we'll just go with the first right of refusal, and we'll have a discussion at that time. Yeah. And then if we chose to extend it or not extend it, that's... Percentage just gives a target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of let them, you can get away with up to this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at that. It's $2 less. <laughs> <laughs> we could just write him we want to go down 5% every year. I just get a 5% raise every year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So any other discussion around that? No? All right. So if you get talk with Ryan, try to get um, worded around putting the well in, I'll try to finish this. I'll oh, use my experience God. as an attorney to write that. Would you? Is it good? <laughs> I thought you were a doctor. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> um, thank you, Andy. Uh, 
Security <laughs> camera update, Mr. Burns. Yep. So happy to say that the uh, the camera systems are up and running at both uh, Royal Memorial Park and Jeff Lane. Um, Andy Ruggles was kind enough to help me out with. Uh, some we had a really great nice morning together. Right, wiring work. Oh, yeah, I'm sure those, you did. Those wires were <laughs> perfect. So he did a good job out there, and the, they're up and running. Everything's working working well. So I think we're we'll be covered. Hopefully. One day I'd like to meet you down there and just kind of see yep. what they're, you know, what we can see so we have an idea. Maybe we'll ask LPD to meet us there too so they can Not get an idea. idea. Not a bad idea. Awesome. Thank you for that, Chris. Appreciate it. Um, we already did pickleball, pickleball court updates. Google Sites, Mr. Jeff Town. Any progress with that? Yeah. So I've uh, been playing around with it over the last couple of weeks. I sent out an email with a link. Um, to it, you can you can see what's out there. I'm still sort of collecting the files and, and putting them in there, uh, the agendas and the minutes, um, you know, contact lists of, of people, and a lot of the files now are just on different people's sort of personal yeah. personal drive. So I think collecting it and putting it there, then as people come and go, yes, that's... we don't have to move anything. So you're able to go in and pull them from those. Because I know I have a lot in mind, so you you have permissions to pull it. If not, talk with John. Yeah, I th I think I do. If if any if anybody has shared anything with the commission, then I can then I have visibility to it. Um, and I've been working with with um, uh, Matt on the the uh, oh, minutes. Okay. Because um, those are he sends out links to the individual minutes, but he he shared the his the folder, so I can just pull a bunch of them in there. So yeah. like COI, I think I shared it just with you so that the whole commission doesn't yeah. have to get that so I'll, extra I'll put email. That so is that what that. I should do as something well, like that? Well, once I get everything set up, you'll, show us how you'll be able to just okay. put it in there. All right. So, so yeah. now what, what will be public viewable and what's not going to be public viewable? Um, so we have to sort that out. I've okay. set it up uh, a structure right now with a, a bunch of things um, and then that are intended to be public. And then there's another sub page, and everything under that would be just the commission members. Okay. So, you know, maybe at the next meeting or so, after I've got things sort of sorted out, <clears throat> we can talk about if I made the right choices yep. about where things are, and we can easily move things from yep. the public so to the private area. Legally, we're supposed to have what the agenda out there and the meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely don't want to share the certificate of insurance to everybody or any, you know. But the uh, meeting minutes in the agenda are definitely the top two. All the field contracts should be part of that. The field yeah. they could be Con public the contracts in the public. RFPs. Oh, yeah, that's public. I think all any public. projects going forward, so public. that we're not trying to backtrack and find information from ten years ago or five years mm -hmm. ago that we could have a plans file. for the pickleball courts. Yeah, where that that's all there and yeah. the mapping for it and the surveying and yeah. then it's an easy find. Right. Do you see it as a good way to organize yeah. the information we have? I mean, it, I think it's hard yep. to find it the way we have now. I'm like searching and... So what's your overall thought <laughs> of Google Sites? Is it easy to work with once you've been playing with uh, it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, once you play with it long enough, it gets easy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really just sort of a, a, a simple web page yep. front end on, on uh, Google Drives. So it's just... You know, a bunch of folders that you can you can put files into, and then there's a, a web page front end that sort of makes it easier to navigate. To, to present. Awesome. So. Thank you, for Jeff. I appreciate it. Uh, and last one, Southern New Hampshire Tour of Lights. So Let's the start. sign up genius is all set, and we're supposed to launch it on the 26th of November for people to sign up with their house addresses. And then I'll submit it to Southern New Hampshire. Um, on December 5th then it'll it'll come out and everybody will have access to so how do we when do we let people know they should you know that this is going on on the 26th I'm going to use the sign up genius for the link okay um when I send it out okay. and so um, I think that's the easiest way because I didn't want people to have I don't need their names just their address names won't be published but if they did it in the comments on a post then the address is linked to their name. Plus, it's easy for me to miss one, yeah. you know. Or if it gets shared, which I hope it does, this way 
I don't have to go through, look at the mom's, what was posted in the mom's page or the WhatsApp page or whatever. The link's going to so, be the so same. So you'll have a sign up genie, then yeah. we'll put it on all the different social media pages. And I'll have their pages. email and their yep. address. I'll be able to send those people reminders, make sure your lights are ready for December 6th through whatever. And um, then the people in town will get the addresses for the 13 towns participating. So if anybody wants to go to a, another town one night with their family and drive through. Drop so, our kids off. Get yeah, drop them off. <laughs> we can even blast, yeah, go try the can blast the link out with the whole database of softball and baseball too to get to more people. Yeah, okay. I'll grab it once you do it and I'll just send it okay. out. Okay. Yeah, so, so like it should be very simple. Yeah, but just reach more people that way. And then I'm not sure how Southern New Hampshire, whoever's heading it, sends it out. But um, I'm going to have someone for at least Litchfield. Someone's going to help me map it so it makes it easier, at least for our town, to, to find the streets and the most efficient way to drive through it. All right. Awesome. So Thank you, it. Judy. Um, other, any other business? No? Can I bring up one thing? Because it just popped into my mind this week. Turn your timer off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I had talked about getting, before the town hall reopened, a first aid kit. And now that basketball's in there, I think we really, you had approved it. I think we really need to get that and some ice packs, instant ice packs. There's no fridge or anything in there. You, We had discussed it. You had a, said we didn't even need a vote because of the whatever funds, is it yeah. um karen white told me she can do it right through use the uh the town credit card um, but i want to just double check that the funds are there or where the funds should come from um and there might be a benefit buying it through the fire department uh, that's what okay. i was gonna say we might want to speak with the fire department because okay. they might be able to get us a the, good, the kit we good want first aid kit. i'd rather go through the fire department than get something off amazon and find yeah. out it's you know yeah um, I'm sure they have a discount through the services. And you think they, they would have the packs. ice packs too, huh? I mean, we definitely need those mm -hmm. in there. Okay. I bought like an 80 pack of ice packs this winter. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, this summer for baseball. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to check with the fire department on that? Yeah, yeah. Reach out to the fire department, see what they recommend. And we have funds in the general supplies, which I think come from general supplies. There's $500 I did in ask her. Supplies. I said, can it come from general supply since it's going to be in talent hall where our office is and she said yes <laughs> that's why i said office supplies can we buy it with our office supply money um yep yeah go forward with that talk with the fire department and see what they say and then um yeah, we'll have to vote on it because it'll be over a certain amount but that's no no big deal um Even i called it was pre we pre-approved it we had already approved this but just hadn't bought it because uh, talent so, was open yet did we, do you remember when we pre-approved it? Do you have the meeting minutes? Oh, well, we can. <laughs> do you have the meeting minutes? Tonight? Yeah, <laughs> let's do a new one. All right. All right. Like, can we do like up to a certain amount of money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Up to five hundred dollars. Yeah. All right. So I'll make a motion to allow uh, Secretary Judy Brennan to investigate and purchase um, first a first aid kit to be stored at Talent Hall and ice packs, including ice packs. Um, not to exceed $500. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstained. Motion carries 700. Um, porta potties. I contacted United Supply or United, whatever they're called, uh, last week. They were supposed to come out this week, pull them all except for Dara. So if anybody drives around and sees. Uh, Comfort station still sitting there. Please let me know. But they should have been pulled out by now. There's one at Jeff on Saturday, but the, or Sunday, whatever day we did that. Saturday. Sunday. That was Sunday. 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 Or Saturday. No, Saturday. 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 Was Saturday. Yeah. So I think she said she'd have them gone by. I thought she said last week, but possibly this week. But they should be coming out, and the only one will be Talent Hall. The new contract starts in January, so at that point of time, I've already spoken with that lady. Um, the gentleman that was going to work with us just sold his house in town and is moving to Texas. So, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but the company's based out of Drake it, so it should be okay. Um, so I spoke with that lady, so she is ready to go. We're just going to let her know. We're going to put a, a, a handicap unit at Roy. We'll use the regular ones at all the rest. 
It'll be the same situation when we're ready. We'll call her. They'll deliver them. Um, there'll be a monthly billing for each of them. It's a $50 tip over. She says they believe their units have um, loops on the back so we could chain them or bolt them to fences or walls, etc., which should help. Put that good idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I told her we definitely want those. Um, so should the poor pads. Hmm? We still should pour pads. I agree. We should still yes. yeah. cement pads at least to put them on, and then if we could bolt them down. Um, so that should, January, we should start seeing that change around. So the company's based out of Drake it, so, you know, unfortunately, I can't just call the guy up down the street and say, hey, we need you here, but uh, um, they do have 24-hour service, emergency service, et cetera. Did we find out why our dumpster fee was so high this year? I haven't had a chance. I never go to the dumps. I never go get to I'll ask Dave. On. Yeah, I find out. Because we, we have four four yards. For tomorrow. And ask him what we could do about um, doing it as an on-call situ situation. I think that's what it is. That's what I thought it was, too. If it's not, it's once a month. It's not very often they come. It's not like a weekly deal. So should... Dara be once a month? Should that be like bi-weekly and all the rest, once a month? or just I think part of it was they wanted to have a, a certain cadence coming to get them. Yeah. I'll talk. I'll probably see Dave either. If I don't see him tomorrow, I'll see him Saturday. Who I'll empties the him. trash cans there as they fill in? The, the town does. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jim Brown. Yeah. So the road agent goes by usually on Mondays, okay. and they empty them all, and they line them all. Yeah, if you could talk to him, that'd be great to figure out. You know, we only need, we have, what do we have, Four? We'll have five. We should have Corning, five. we have Jeff Lane, we have Sawmill, and we have Dara. Oh, yeah, and Brickyard. Not, there's not one at in this. Oh, there's not one at Brickyard? No. Nope. Nope. So there's only four then. Um, and they were supposed to be $40 a month. Is that what it was? 70. 70. Well, it was 70 because when I found, remember I sent it to you guys, it was, I think it was $70 a month. And so when we did the math. It was cheaper we, than the one big one. The one big one. Big one, yeah. Right. Which was So three, that's why when we were over, that's why I was curious, you know, did we have a special. Uh, Dumpster once because of you know, ball fast or something like that. There was an extra pickup or something because it was off by a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, still so seemed Perp. very expensive. Huh. Unless there was some weird like hazard fee or something. One of them had something in it or something. You know, because you got to think it should only be what two hundred eighty dollars a month. Right. Which isn't outrageous for it's six cheap. or seven months of seven months of the year because then mm -hmm. we pull them except for. Do they pull them? Have they pulled them? Or you no. just lock them up? We lock them. Well, they're locked, yeah. Do we get, yeah, ask them if we get a monthly fee for them just to sit there. Yeah, I'll find out from Dave. Thank you, Steve. Um, next maybe year, we could charge them rent to put them on our property <laughs> like to the store their think. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your store. So then we'll have a parking lot full of dumpsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sixty dollars a month. <laughs> Next year, we'll have to put another uh, porta potty up by the, the pickleball courts, most likely. Because that'd be a, a far distance to walk. All right. Um, anything else? River access is closed. River okay. access is closed. And the tennis nets are down. Tennis nets are down. River access is closed. Thank you. Good job. That's it. All right. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please signify that say aye. 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 Motion carries 700. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar.